Hey guys, what's up? It's Hugh coming from very, very, as you can see, cold 40 degrees LA weather. Um, I'd like to introduce something new this week. And let me explain a bit on how I got to making this thing uh, that will carry on for a long time. So, I was sitting in my dorm now, it's thinking about uh, my four years of coaching and my four years of playing. And, uh, like, what I did right, what I did wrong, and how I could coach you guys differently because my coaching regimen for each of the last four years has been really similar because everybody was a returning, or sorry, everybody was a new player. There were no returning players with the exception of Devonch. Every team I had was basically a reset. And this is the first time I haven't had a team that's a reset, which is actually really, really nice, but it makes your job harder, to, harder as a coach. And so as I thought about my coaching, I began to think about my third and my fourth year playing because I saw a lot of growth from my third year to my fourth year and obviously I've been a returning player and what I realized was that in terms of my mental growth uh sorry in terms of my growth it was mainly mental um sure I learned a lot from my junior year to my senior year but it wasn't that much more a lot of the clues that I got like a lot of the questions that I got were stuff I learned in my junior year or even my sophomore year but what happened to me was that I improved a lot mentally in terms of the fact that I became a lot more confident with my buzzer. I became a lot more confident as a team captain and as a coach. And I knew how to call the shots and I wasn't afraid of that. And so that's what led me to become a lot better of a player. So when I go over, uh, so when I, what I realized is that I needed a way for you guys to also learn how to grow mentally. And so I sat down uh, and I researched on how to teach you guys mental preparations that I came up with. And I hope that this will help you guys to grow a lot mentally. So let's get into it. So let's hop into the basics of it. And before I teach you guys or show you guys what I want you to do, let me talk about, uh, let me define two words for you. So let me define physical and let me define mental. So. Physical, let me explain that to you and how you traditionally would think about it. It's very, very similar in terms of quiz bowl. So if, if we think about a, an Olympic athlete, let's say a really good basketball player, right? And we think about physical, uh, we're thinking about his technical actions. We're thinking about um, his ball handling, his uh, shooting mechanics, his uh, how fast he is when he runs off the court, his defense, right? uh and how he prepares for that that's that's the physical uh when we're talking about the physical and quiz bowl, it's the same thing it's everything that you guys have been taught until now so the buzzing the talking during bonuses the answering questions the thinking about questions those are all physical and that's why i want you guys to understand that's what we're defining as physical even though it's not physical aside from maybe like hitting the buzzer it's physical okay it's what you do to prepare it's uh how good you are at the thing that you do and that comes through a lot of hard work. But I'd like to also push the mental. And so that's all the wiring inside your brain. That's what sports psychologists work on. So your emotions, your inner thoughts, your mentality, and your preparation, specifically your mental preparation. So before a tournament, uh, I would wake up at 4.30. I'd cook myself two eggs with rice and caramelized onions, which is the best breakfast, by the way. I miss it dearly because I can't cook it here until I'm a third year. But uh, and then I listened to Chance the Rapper, uh, the coloring, uh, the coloring book album, and I'd have to play that twice, once as I was driving and once in the BART train in order for myself to feel prepared before stepping into a tournament. That was my routine, right? That's how I got mentally prepared. For other people, it's different. For Jeshwin, it's hugging a squishy. Uh, for other people, I don't know what they do. Do like people do their own thing, but that's an example of mental preparation. Uh, it's also a lot of other stuff and we're going to be working on that, but it's basically how you feel before, during, after a tournament and when you're not in rounds. And what I want you to understand is that most middle schoolers don't prepare for the mental. It's really, really important uh, because um, I think I'll go over this later, but 90% of Olympians say that, sorry, 100% of Olympians say that 90% of their performance is mental. And because when you're so high on the top, like you have to 
be able to execute. And the execution can be really difficult when it's high pressure. So I'm hoping that you guys will learn a lot from this and that you'll see that mental growth will change your play completely. And I'm hoping that it does. So let's talk about the book that we're gonna be using to, um, sorry, to teach you guys mental. This book is called With Winning and by, by Lanny Bassam. And let me go over some things about this book. So it's, so Lanny Bassam's an Olympic shooter. And so he's a really, really good rifle shooter. He came into the 1972 Olympics believing that he was the best physical shooter. So he was, he came in, he's like, I'm gonna win gold. I am the best by far, it's not even close. And then he got silver. And he sat down and thought about it and he realized that he didn't work on his mental whatsoever. And so for the next four years, for a few hours every single day, he trained on his mental. He worked on how he could improve mentally. And um, it was really, uh, he, he was really diligent in his work. He interviewed really good Olympic athletes who constantly took gold. He talked to sports psychologists. He worked on his own mentality, developed his own system. And he came to the 1976 Olympics. He took gold. He won two national, uh, two world championships after that. He got the first 400. Uh, so he got the first perfect score in a shooting round. The closest score before that had been at 396. When you get those four extra points, that's, that's such a big margin. Like to just go from 396 to 400 is extremely difficult. And so he revolutionized shooting and he's one of the best shooters in history. And I'm asking you to develop his mentality because he commercialized it. He began, he's coached every like a lot of the best individuals out there in any sport that you look at, or like some of the most famous people that you guys know. And so um, what I'm asking you is basically develop his mentality, which is the mentality of an Olympic athlete. Uh, a bunch of countries ask him to personally coach their athletes. And so you're basically developing the preparation of an Olympic athlete in seven weeks. And so uh, that's really, really difficult, but let me go over how it's difficult. So the book itself is very easy to read. The grammar is not that intense. The, um, the language is really easy. He even makes some grammatical mistakes and the font is big and the pages are somewhat small. So it's really easy to read, but it's harder to understand the concepts for two reasons. Uh, the first of which is that you've probably never thought about stuff like this before, and so it might be even more difficult for you guys. But two, you have to think about what he's saying and then implement it into your own life and your own how you think about things mentally and see what you need to improve on. And having that realization can range from easy to extremely, extremely difficult, and you'll just never get it. So it's really, really hard, but I'll be there to help guide you through those steps. And even more than that, the hardest thing ever is to implement it. Because when you want to implement your mentality, it has to be something that's done subconsciously. You don't think about it. it you just do it. Um, it's like it's like taking a breath, right? When you breathe, aside from maybe when you're running, you don't think about your breath at all. You just do it naturally. Imagine how hard your life would be if you had to constantly think about breathing. Like right? You wouldn't be able to do anything, but it's something that comes subconsciously. Just like your mentality, if you're constantly thinking about your mentality, you're never gonna get anything done. But if it's something that comes subconsciously and it comes naturally and it's the perfect mentality, you will perform so much better. But the hard part about it is that you're gonna have to first consciously think about it and train your mind to think about it subconsciously. And that takes a lot of work. So don't feel worried if you don't 100% understand this. Most people don't in the beginning, but that's why we're here to train you. Uh, and even if you get part of it, that means you're part, it means like you're 25% of the Olympic athlete's mind in your head above your MSNCT opponent. So like, that's a big amount of progress. So don't worry about it. So in terms of Helga and studying that way, Helga died in the storm of her own tears. Uh, she got very sad and then she cried and then that formed a whirlpool and then the whirlpool drowned her to the ninth circle of hell. So she done done. But in terms of the study guide, um, I won't expect you guys to work on it anymore. Uh, if you do and you like it, by all means continue. Uh, if it's effective for you, like keep going. But if it's not, then study your own way. Uh, I just expect you guys to have a very, very diligent work ethic. So you know the work ethic it takes to win. Like that last week, 
between uh, before MSNCT last year, you guys grew a lot. Like, you became much, much better players. So I'm expecting that you put in that work ethic if you want to grow. And so uh, I trust that you guys will keep yourself accountable and that you'll keep others accountable and that nobody has to nudge you to do that hard work. If you want to win, just put in the work. Like, just do it. You'll be able to do it. I know that you can. Uh, Helga and the study guide was just to create a central document where some people would find it very effective and you guys could have a hub of knowledge as well as to get you guys into the pressure and mojo of studying and setting like an hourly routine. Uh, I expect you guys to keep it up and to increase it a lot, but I'm not going to tell you to because you guys are returning players. I expect that you will work hard. I'm not going to push you to do it. I know that you will. Let's go back into the mental and how to focus and how I'm going to train you guys. So you guys will have video lectures every week. Uh, you're going to have readings every week from With Winning in Mind. And after those readings will come the worksheets. And these are really, really, really important. I want to stress this because this is basically how much I'm going to see you've improved in your mental state or how you've grown in your mental state or what you need to work on. This worksheet and maybe some one on one conversations are all that I'm going to have to see how much you guys have grown. So I really need you to take these very, very seriously uh, if you want to grow mentally. Um, I'm going to be asking you guys questions, and I need you to really, really think and really, really talk about what you want to grow on mentally. Uh, those mental facets that, uh, like, whether you understand them, like, I need you to put a lot of time in these, because if you bullshit them, then I can only bullshit help you. Uh, because if you don't give me the content for me to work on, like I'll put in as much time as I need to to work on these. But if I don't have anything to work with, then there's nothing I can help you with. So when you do these worksheets, I expect you to take them seriously. I expect you to put in the time to work on them because I really want to see you guys grow mentally. And this is a really, really important uh, topic when it comes to improving as a quizable player. Uh, so really make sure that you spend a lot of time in these worksheets uh, or else I can't help you too much on it. Uh, and then when it comes to reading the book, take your time with it. You can read ahead. I'm not going to disallow it, but it's not going to help you that much. And I really strongly discourage you from doing it, mainly because uh, I want you to really implement what you learn in that week. So if I teach you one topic in one week, it's probably going to take you that entire week to understand that one topic, to fully understand and do it. Uh, and I expect you, it's going to be really hard for you to be diligent and do that one topic. Whereas if you go over a bunch of topics, you're going to just lose track and you're not going to spend time really analyzing and understanding each one. So take your time with the material. I'd suggest you don't go ahead. Plus, it makes your life easier because you don't have to read extra. I mean, you're going to read it. Uh, and when we start piling on material, you're going to have to understand the previous material as well. So it's going to be a lot of work. So I wouldn't read ahead if I were you guys. Like, Take a topic, understand it. So let's hop into lecture one, winning in mentality. It's page nine to 22 with, 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 with winning in mind. So uh, let's first define what you think that winning is. So is winning a trophy? Is a top score? Is it 30 PVB or is it just simply winning your game? What I want you to realize is that these are all the wrong definitions and that literally the title of this presentation is the right definition. Winning's a process. And that's something that I'll help you guys understand very soon. <laughs> so it's every game, it's every question, it's every word set, it's every thought inside your head. When, uh, when you compete, winning isn't a moment, if you really think about it. Winning is every single thing that you do, right or wrong, that gets you to the top. And so it's a process. It's every single little thing, whether it's every single moment of your competition to literally every single topic that you study, right? Everything adds up. The, that entire process from the day that you were born, before you even started playing Quizable, you were learning things, right? The fact that the, the first word that you spoke contributed to the fact that you know how to speak when you play Quizable. Now, that's a very, very basic and like low level approach to it, but it's true, okay? So 
every single action that you make helps you to become a better quizful player, without a doubt. And so winning is a process, every single action that you take. That's what I want you guys to understand. Going back to what I taught you guys about existentialism last year, right? <laughs> Each moment in existence, past and present, makes you who you are. And you can't regret those decisions, and you have to live in the present and know that. Trust that the present and the past that you've had before prepared you for this moment, right? And all that you can do is just execute in the present. So it's every action that comes together to lead you to win. And what I want you to understand is that you can have a winning performance and not win. Especially when you hop into something like MSNCT, uh, chances are, like, even if you're the best team in the tournament, there might be like a 30% chance that you guys win. Uh, just because there's a lot of luck involved, right? Whether it's the 20 plus, like, it's the 20 toss-ups and bonuses that you know stuff about. Uh, if it's the, uh, like, if you happen to match a team where like they have better they have better knowledge on certain topics than you do for just that round like there's a lot of factors that go in between but if you can look at every single secondary performance and be proud of it there's absolutely no regret or fear that you have at all and then you there, you don't fear anything you don't fear the past you don't fear the present and you don't fear the future you know that you came prepared you know that you did the best that you can do and so that means that understanding that you that you're not perfect but it's okay to accept perf uh perfection from yourself let me go over that a bit more so when you strive for something i encourage you guys to strive for perfection you strive for the best i always coach you to strive for your best but if you make mistakes it's okay to understand that you made those mistakes right it's okay to realize that you're not perfect but that you have a but that you strive for perfection right nobody's ever going to be perfect even when lanny bassam shot that 400 i guarantee you it wasn't perfect right for him it probably wasn't perfect even though each of the score was a 10 10 10 10 10 it's not perfect so when you sit down and you think about uh what perfection is realize that you're never going to get there but that's what you strive for because you want to be as the best player that you can be so when mistakes are made it's all right right Realize that you made the mistake, see if there's anything you can learn from it, but move on. There's nothing that happens to you when you make that mistake. Winning is a process. Winning comes with mistakes. It's how you carry on forward from that moment that determines how good of a player you will be and you are and you were. Okay? So if you tell yourself to perform well, then you'll perform well. Right? And if you have a mistake, tell yourself, like what I do is I literally tell myself, okay. Uh, I made I made a mistake there. I know what I did wrong. I'm confident that I'm a good player. Uh, it's not going to stop my aggression, right? I just need to realize that, okay, this is why I should have done that situation. Move on. Brand new start. Tabula rasa, right? Blank slate. And the best competitors, they don't think about winning when they play well. They don't... Winning is not an achievement. Because achievements do not define yourself. When you write your essay for college, or even when you guys wrote your essays for high school, they don't care about your accomplishments, right? They don't ask, they don't ask you for an accomplishment list. They ask you for your personal essay, right? And that personal essay, you detail your experiences about an event and what that means to you, okay? So with the best competitors realize that winning is not the trophy. Winning is the, all the steps that you take to possibly get to the trophy, and that all those steps define who you are, okay? Um, the best competitors don't think about winning when they play well. They're not worried about, uh, they're not worried about a trophy or anything like that. They're just worried about doing the best that they can do, right? They're worried about the process. They're worried about each moment, okay? So let's move on. And so these quotations will help you analyze the points I just made a lot better. So in page 14 of With Winning in Mind, uh, Bassam states that one thing is certain, however, your worth as a person is not equal to your score to say. It is more than a game to a serious player, but not worth uh, the self-destruction that many competitors do to themselves after a poor performance. Your performance isn't based on one day or even three days, right? That tournament does not define how good of a quizable player you are. 
it's how you do it's how you practice every day how much you've grown that really defines how much you win right that's something you guys have to understand it, it sounds like a very sobby but definition but think about it if you hold yourself to one or two or three days for and that determine your entire success and you don't do well think about how you feel after that tournament you have no purpose in life anymore right and you have no pride in your accomplishment think about it let's say you lose or let's say the easy example if you lose right after a competition you held yourself to that trophy you never got that trophy all your goals and aspirations in life are over there, there's no point in it anymore and that's going to cause you into to go into a severe dump right let's and even let's say the fact that somehow you win right you win that tournament that's the high point in your life like there's no better point than that now because that's how you define the high point in your life right you define it on one moment and so what happens one you become lazy and you don't grow at all or two you cap yourself at that point you never become a better person life is always a path to becoming a better person and if you ask your parents this they will agree with me life is always about self-improvement it's always about becoming a better person than you were the day before about learning more than you had the day before right so it's not worth it to destroy yourselves after a poor, a poor performance right have pride in the fact that you get to compete when i talked to my coach when i was nervous one day he told me you get the privilege to compete in a national tournament stop being nervous and just be in awe of the fact that you get to compete in a national tournament and the end that he said that i shot a 22 out of 30 which is really really high for my division so don't don't fret after a poor performance right and don't be nervous in the moment because there's nothing to be nervous about if you really understand how this works then you trust the preparation that you put in and that's all that matters nothing else will scare you nothing else will phase you and uh the second quint quotation uh, i'll give a bit of context to it after i say it so one could also argue that who you become is equally important to where you finish in the long run so uh, bassam reflected on this statement after the 2004 uh olympics where uh i don't remember two specifically in fact let me check this real quick i got the book right here um yeah so it was a shooting uh it was uh athens 2004 olympics and there were two shooters and um the person who took silver looked like he was gonna get gold and so this guy was in the lead and then he got so lost in the moment that he shot the wrong target and so he lost that and got silver instead of gold because he shot the wrong target because he was so nervous it's not a fact that he missed it was just he focused he forgot about that he forgot which target he was on and he shot the wrong target and when he found that out, when he found that out the instant he found out he immediately went to go congratulate the gold medalist and it was a class act and when you look at that action are you really going to argue that oh he's a loser because he didn't get gold you're not going to argue that because he's a really, really good competitor. Like he was going to beat him and it doesn't for him. That medal doesn't matter. He doesn't have any regrets, right? He's happy to compete. He's happy with the way that he performed. He made one mistake and it's not a big deal to him, right? And he does what a winning competitor does. He congratulates the winner, right? He's happy that that guy earned a gold medal because that other guy on the other side worked really, really hard for it, too. So winning isn't first place. That's something I really want you guys to get. It's what you might think that it is right now, but it's not. Winning is the process. If you can, if you work hard every single day and you look back at it and you're proud of your work, there's nothing to regret. And that means not being hard at yourself. If you think about, oh, I could have worked one or two hours harder. It's not something you think about. When I, when I finished playing, I didn't find a need to play anymore. At first, I was kind of sad about how my tournament results went out, but after that, I just I was proud of the work that I put in. Uh, when I look back at my my years at Bellarmin, I completely revitalized the club that was about to die, and all of that was done through hard work. And there's no bad feeling I have about it.
I I won one tournament, one varsity tournament my entire four years, and that wasn't necessarily a feeling of oh I feel bad about this. It was just that I I was really proud of the work I did and the process that I went through, and that's all that matters. If you can grow through a process, then Think about it this way. Nobody's going to remember who won MSNCT four years from now or even two years from now, right? Those new competitors, they care about who their their chance to win. They're not going to care about your chance. You're not going to go down as a legend, right? You're going to go down as some kids who love learning and did really well at something. And that's what everybody who shows up to that tournament comes down as. Whether you get first place or last place, they're all people who showed up to a tournament and had a passion for learning and expressed that passion. That's all you remember. So don't feel nervous. There's no reason to feel nervous, right? But even with all of that, and say you fully understand that, right? Like you, you understand that concept. When you show up to nationals, you're still nervous, right? That might be something you want to question yourself on. Like, why are you nervous, right? And even though you, you shouldn't feel nervous, it's still a natural feeling. That's perfectly fine. It's perfectly okay to feel nervous, right? Because this tournament matters a lot to you. You put two, three years of effort into it, and you worked really, really hard, but you still feel nervous. Uh, and that's where our mental questioning comes into. And that's the level of depth I want you to think about when you're analyzing what you need to work on mentally. Like, that's why I want you to think about, oh, I feel this way. What can I do to not feel this way, right? Or what can I improve on, right? There's no complete set answer to answering how you can get rid of that nervousness. Uh, I mean, it could just be reiterating what I told you. Maybe even like telling yourself that vocally, right? Saying, okay, I'm a good player. I studied really hard for this. I'm going to do great, right? And the definition of great is I'm going to play the best quiz ball I can. And so... That's why I want you to reach. Figure out what you need to work on and improve on it. And as I said earlier, the top athletes say 90% of their performance is mental. Because when you get down to the really, really, really good players, they're all good. Everybody's super good. Everybody can get those questions, but it's a fact of your reflexes, how fast and how confident you are. Especially that confidence, the fact that you can trust yourself in high pressure situations to get the job done, right? And you can trust your teammates to get the job done. And even if you don't get the job done one time, you're going to still try just as hard and do just as well to get it next time, right? That's trusting yourself to be a good player. That's why we work on mental, right? When you're in, when I played, you, if, whether I was playing William Golden, who got questions in half length, or I was playing some kid who just started quiz, well, I played the same way. The instant I knew it, I went for it. And it just, it came to me. And the instant that I that I knew the question, I buzzed in the same time, where it's the best guy or the last guy, right? Maybe it's the best guy, I have to adjust my buzz to make sure that like I can get it before he does, but I'm not nervous either way that I'm competing, right? Because I know that even if it's the best opponent, I tell myself when I play, when I played in high school, I told myself, I am the best shooter at this tournament. Hand, or sorry, not the best, I'm thinking about archery. I'm the best quiz bowl player, I'm the best literature player in the nation, hands down. If you face me, you're gonna lose. That's what I told. Even if they beat me, even if I, even if deep down I knew that they were better than me, I told myself I am the best player in the nation. And when you tell yourself that, you you trust yourself to do well. There's a difference between uh, cockiness and just like silly cockiness, and true confidence. And for me, that was true confidence. Having the faith in myself where I can just hear a question and know that I have a good enough chance to get this as anybody else on this table. And there's nothing stopping me from getting this question aside from myself, right? Because when you think about it, quiz bowl is not a competition versus anybody except for yourself. When you're answering that question, all you have to do, and, and trust me when I say this, all that you have to do is get it whenever you're supposed to get it at the exact moment that you're supposed to get it. And when we go through visualization of answering or buzz visualization, which is a concept that I will go over a week or two from now, you're going to fully understand that. And so uh, what I want you to understand is that 90% of your performance is mental. 
but how much time do you spend working on your mental performance? And I put that in bold and really hard to read font because I want you to think about that. How much of the time that you spend is mental performance? So think about that. And then uh, and ask yourself, should I be spending more time working on my mental performance instead of just keeping on like studying and like driving my brain out? Because there's, there's a difference between working hard and working smart and being very efficient in the way you work. You want to be very efficient in the way that you study. You don't want to waste your time. So we're going to go into our first really where winning was a big concept and the mentality towards that is a big concept. But our first detailed concept is this, and it's understanding your mentality. So your mentality is split into three branches, your conscious, your subconscious, and your self-image. This is a triple Venn diagram, and ideally you want those circles to be even, and they all interact with each other. And so I'm gonna get into how they interact with each other right now. So let's look at the first slide, which is your conscious mind, okay? So these are all your thoughts and emotions, and it's what you think, okay? So uh, when I buzz in and I say an answer, I am saying it consciously. If the, answer, if the answer is Mona Lisa, when I say Mona Lisa, I say Mona Lisa consciously. And the fact that like the tone at which I say it, how loud I say it, when I say it, like do I wait five seconds and tell myself, okay, I say it now and I say Mona Lisa as my answer line, right? That's, that's what you do consciously, right? Like whether like your teammate reaches you for a high five and then you slap that high five good, right? That's a conscious action, right? There, there's nothing inside your brain telling you to do it. It's something you just do. Or sorry, not, not nothing inside your brain, but like it's something that you do, like realizing that you're gonna do that, okay? <laughs> and it sets your goals and analyzes your setbacks, okay? You form goals consciously. You tell yourself, or you feel, or you uh, analyze your setbacks consciously, okay? And the goal for our conscious mind is to learn how to set goals. So we'll go into goal setting probably next week, but I want you to understand uh how your conscious works right how your direct actions work and once i start linking these this may seem a bit confusing in the beginning but once i start linking all three you'll completely understand how this works so now let's go into your subconscious mind okay now this is how skilled you are and how you perform all right this is the physical basically these are the technical actions okay it's how you when i told you about uh when, you, when you're taking a breath and you do that subconsciously this is the subconscious right it's what you do naturally and, it, and your conscious trains the subconscious through repetitive actions. And that's a very important concept to understand. You tell yourself when Namai hasn't studied for like, Namai didn't study yesterday and he's really mad with himself, right? He's like, okay, Namai, I'm gonna, like he tells himself, all right, I'm gonna sit down, I'm gonna study for six hours straight, right? That's his conscious mind telling him to study. But all the studying he do transfers to his subconscious because think about it, when you answer a question, when I'm, say the clue is like, um, okay, say I'm buzzing on a question on Carlos Fuentes, right? And they mention Aura, right? I don't, if I'm thinking about this consciously, I go to Aura and then I go to like page eight on my 100 page literature study sheet, right? I'm like, okay, page eight, Fuentes, and I go works and then I go to my Boulder works and I go, oh, 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 Aura. Okay, I don't do that. Unless you have an eidetic memory, you're not consciously thinking about the answer. Okay, it's something that comes naturally. When you hear Fuentes, or when you hear Aura, you're like, oh, that's a work by Fuentes. You don't think about how you got there, you just buzz, right? That's a subconscious action, okay? That's the difference between the conscious and the subconscious, okay? Conscious is aware, subconscious just happens naturally, right? It's things that you don't even like, you're not fully concentrating when you, when you, or sorry, you are fully concentrated, but like, you're not aware when you realize them. And so you consciously train, tell yourself to train your subconscious, right? Through repetitive actions. And uh, when you do something without thinking about it, you get better at it, which is what we want to work on your mental state at. We want your mental state to be subconscious, okay? So think about a stock clue, okay? If I say um, Moby Dick, right? you will immediately buzz and say Melville, right? There's no, you're, if you, there's no way you're gonna remember, oh, 
I remember this from when I was in like third grade and I saw a big fat whale and it said Moby Dick and on the underside it said Herman Melville. No, you're not going to remember that. You're just going to know that Moby Dick is Melville. That's a stock clue. That's a subconscious action. You're not thinking about it, right? So our goal for our subconscious is we want to make our performance natural and let it come easy to us, okay? Don't overthink it, right? The best things happen, like the best competitors don't think about winning when they win, right? So the best players don't think about their, about performing well when they perform. They just do it. It just happens. Don't worry about it, right? Okay, let's move on to our last one. Our last one is the self-image, okay? And so this is how you feel, okay? Whether it's, oh, I feel like I'm a god when I play, or, oh, I'm so nervous when I play. Or maybe you're like, oh, Jeshuan is holding way too many squishies in his rounds, right? All of these are, your self-image is your emotions. It's how you view, it's how you view yourself, right? It's the, it's the ego, right? It's the super ego and, the, and that kind of stuff, right? So it's your attitude. If there's a simple way to put it, it's your attitude. It's how you feel, right? And this is really important because in the last slide when we analyze this, everything comes down to your self-image. If there's one of those circles that controls everything, it's your self-image. Your conscious doesn't control it. It's your self-image, okay? And so you can be really, really good. You can be the best player, but if you don't believe that you're going to win, you're not going to win, which is what happens to Shiva. His self-image isn't up there, right? He hits T8, and his self-image just goes from like, can I get this on the screen? It goes from like the top to like the bottom, right? It just goes like down. Because he's not realizing in himself that, oh, nothing happens when I go from T8 to T5, right? Sure, I play different people, but if I'm the, if I'm the best player in the nation, like, it doesn't matter. Like, I beat them easy, right? So it doesn't matter how good you are. If you believe, if you don't believe that you're going to win, you're not going to win. And so that's your self-image. It's how you feel when you play, right? So let's link all three of these up. Okay, so let's go over the last part. And this is probably the most important slide in this presentation. And that's how these three link to your performance. Let's start off with the beginning of this. Uh, I'm going to be using drawings for this to help illustrate it. So your conscious mind triggers the subconscious to perform. All right. Um, that's very, very. That's the basic concept. OK, so when you're in round and you're playing, uh, your conscious mind says, OK, Hugh, let's focus on this question. You can get this answer. And your subconscious, as the words are being read, goes through all of the things in your mind that are going on, right? Like that split brain thing, right? That con your conscious is telling your subconscious, focus on getting the question, right? So that's what happens. That's this arrow that links it right here. And the subconscious, uh, and so, okay, let's get to the point where like subconscious is like, oh, answer is Jane Austen. Hugh, bust Jane Austen, bust Jane Austen right now, right? So your subconscious checks your self image on how much it should exert itself and how much it should act, okay? So, subconscious checks self-image. Say I'm hot, right? Like, he was just like spitting hot fire at like 15 all day, every day, baby. And so like, I'm like, okay, Hugh, it's super early in the question, but you're a god. Buzz Jane Austen. So I buzz Jane Austen, get 15. It's like, ooh, big poppy. Okay. Say that like, you're not so confident about it though. And so you, and so, Two, one of two things happens. You realize it's Jane Austen, but you're like, oh, it's early on in the question. I'm not sure about this. Like, even though I probably will get it right, I'm really nervous. I'm not going to buzz. And so you don't buzz. And so the other guy buzzes and you lose the 15 and the bonus, right? <laughs> or number two, you buzz in, right? And then you have a change of heart. Your, your subconscious buzzes in and then your self-image is just like, you don't know this. It's not Austin. Say something else. Say, uh, who's in the room? Say Lillian Hellman, right? You say Lillian Hellman, boom, you just lost that, right? Or say you say Charlie Bronte, boom, you just lost that 15, right? You're done, right? And so that self-image is really important. As you can see, everything links to self-image. The self-image is like the final check, right? So you always want to have a positive, confident self-image. Because if you don't, you drop how good you are, right? You instantly lose. 
right? And that can even affect how fast you buzz, right? Because if you're confident with your buzz, you buzz faster than when you're not confident, right? You has the instant you hesitate on that buzzer, you lose in middle school, right? And so your conscience also influences your self-image as well, okay? Because so our, from our self-image, we go to our performance. Say it's a good performance, right? And so our performance, even though this arrow is not included in the diagram, it goes back to our conscience, okay? And our conscience is like, hey, you did really well on that. Keep playing well. And that conscience boosts your self-image. And then you're just like, oh, okay. I'm really, really good at... Um, I'm really, really good at quizable, okay? And it's just like, oh yeah, okay, I'll keep being confident. I'm ke I'll keep being really, really good, okay? But say you neg, okay? And then uh, your self-image goes to your, oh, that's not a visible color. Let's use yellow. Your self-image goes to your performance and then you're just like, oh, that was awful. I played so bad, right? Uh, oh wait, sorry. Your self-image goes to your performance, you neg, and that goes to a, your uh, conscious. And then you um, you go to your conscience, and your conscience is like, okay, I played really, really bad there. I should stop buzzing because I'm gonna just mess it up for my teammates, right? And so your conscience then goes to your self-image, and then you're like, I will never buzz again. I'm an awful quizable player, right? And that just continues the cycle. So this is in what in biology, this is what we call a positive feedback loop where if I can put it very, very simply, good things continue to happen if you have an initial good result and bad things can continue to happen if you have an initial bad result. The way to break this is to mainly fix your self-image, but the true way to do that is to fix your conscience. If you can consciously tell yourself after a bad mistake, okay, I made a mistake, I understand where I went wrong there, but I'm a good quizable player and I will continue to be aggressive because I can beat these guys and I'm good, right? Then you completely reset the system and your self-image is still great. If you have a good play, obviously you just keep it going. You don't let your self-image get too big. But yeah, okay? Um, and so one last thing before I end this talk, hopefully you guys understand that if you have questions, just send me an email. But I wanna go over size of those circles, right? So the size of these three circles. So pretend these are even. I'm very bad at drawing and I'm drawing with my mouse, so it's very difficult to draw. But ideally, these three circles should be even, okay? But what we're, what you'll go over when you read Basson's book is you'll soon understand that your circles aren't that even, right? Uh, for, me, for most of you, it's going to look something like this where you're subconsciously trained to do everything, but these two haven't caught up yet, right? You're not, this is like, you're really trained, but you're not confident in your own performance, right? Where you're just like, all that studying doesn't add up to these two growing. And so there are a lot of different variations of these, like any of these can be bigger than the other. If you look in Bassam's book, you'll see the various scenarios, but I want you to begin thinking before in this presentation about what your circles are right now and identify which of the three needs to grow, which of them, you probably don't want to shrink anything, but which of these three needs to grow and how you can adapt to make all your circles even. And you wanna keep the system in check because if one of these is bigger than the others, it affects the others in negative ways. You want everything in homeostasis. So you want everything to be equal. You want it all in equilibrium, okay? So that's the presentation. I uh, hope you guys learned a lot. We will do a lot of this and I expect you guys to grow a lot mentally, all right? All right, continue practice. Have a good day. Go Higgs.